Hello and welcome to audio editing and recording um, with Meredith Waters. I'm here right in the studio at Hope FM and I'm very excited to be part of this amazing project, the Digital Creation Hub with five other creative people in Esperance. It first started when uh, Jane from Esperance Community Arts gathered us together in the height of COVID. And we got together and thought, wow, how do we keep going with our art forms and, and how could we help the community also get involved and not lose the capacity to also practice some art forms or even try something new? So this is how this project arose. So thank you for joining today. And we're going to get started with the session that I'm running, which is the audio editing and recording using Audacity, which is a free program that is accessible to anyone who's got a computer and access to the internet. So a little bit about me. I've been involved in radio here since the start of 2018, but I first got involved in 2012 with a good friend, we had a lunchtime show. I was working not far away and she thought it'd be fun. And now who'd have thought that eight years later, I'm sitting here doing this with you and helping out around the station. Our lunchtime show uh, was called Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. <laughs> and that probably theme hasn't changed. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is, today we're covering three main topics. Because although Audacity and the equipment is important, and this is the digital hub creation, let's not forget that at the back of all of that is ourselves. So it's our voices that we actually want to do the best we can with to record uh, with the program. So before we get started on any technical things, I thought that we would just run through a few things about how we can care for our voice. Now this information comes from uh, by experience as well as some other training that I've received. So please rest assured that it's you know, quality assured, <laughs> but it's also a little bit of fun. So if you've ever had the experience of losing your voice, it's called laryngitis. And so that's not a great experience. And we don't wanna strain your throat muscles and the sound becomes really bad. So in order to avoid all that, there are five do's that we're going to cover with how to prevent damage to your voice. So one, learn some warm ups. They kind of sound a bit weird, but they, <laughs> but they are important. Take care of your back and your neck. That is really important because it's the whole part. It's not just your lips or your tongue that does it. It does the talking. It's all of us, all like the whole upper body. Also, drink lots of water. There we go. <laughs> um, it's really important to keep your vocal cords moist for two reasons. One, it helps look after yourself and water, drinking water is very good for us anyway. But when you're recording, uh, with a microphone, all the clicks like will be <laughs> will be captured on air and nobody really wants to hear that and it either is going to take you a very long time to edit out so much oh, <laughs> don't you love it? <laughs> We're going live. <laughs> we'll just close the door there. <laughs> um, so that that's number three number four is protect your immune system so uh, look at the bigger picture always so you know lots of vitamin c uh, within these COVID times we want to keep clear of people when they're not well so just a reminder about that um, so uh, and then number five is you know i guess take care of long-term viruses and things like that so that information is broad and that's as broad as we're going to go. No more. We're going to get into it now. Um, now, the five don'ts to pre preserving your voice is avoid straining or yelling. As a mum, I found that very difficult to, <laughs> to remember. But we all know how sore our voices feel after we've had a good yelling session. So best to avoid that if we want to do top quality recording. Um, the, also, the, uh, smoking is not great. I know some people, it's not a popular thing anyway. It's not good for your health, so but it's not great for voices either. Uh, avoid um, antiseptic throat sprays and things like that. I know they're recommended as a, a medical uh, help, but for voice and recording, it, it, we would not want to do that. And also, 
avoid trying to clear your throat because it does actually strain your throat muscles. Also, um, so trying to have lots of liquid that will help us stop clearing our throat. The next basic thing is breathe. I know it's important to life, but also having your um, lungs filled with air. Sorry, that's just the microphone there. <laughs> having your lungs filled with air does help in delivering a really good uh, level of volume when you're speaking. If I like if keep talking and don't breathe in and then eventually what happens is the voice sounds strained and it's terrible and it's not good. So already let's fill our lungs with air. So to that end, let's do it together. <laughs> if we breathe in and we're going to hold it for a little bit, breathe out and then wait. So it's also actually a really good relaxing thing to do. Often we don't breathe with intention, but it is really helpful before you're going to start recording. If you just take a couple of minutes, even one minute, to just fill your air with lungs and it just helps with everything. So let's do it together now. And wait, two, three, four, in, hold, out, two more times, in, hold, out, last one, in, And then drop your shoulders if you're feeling a little bit relaxed or tense from that. So hopefully you'll start to feel a little bit more relaxed, taking a moment, and that actually didn't take very long. The next thing I said about our uh, mouth and neck being relaxed. So we just want to stretch it a little bit only as it's comfortable. So just kind of turn your head to one side and you should be able to feel the stretch there. Remember to drop your shoulders and keep breathing. I know it's a lot to remember, but <laughs> let's keep it going. And then we're going to drop our chin to our chest, just slowly and keep breathing and feel like the tension hopefully leaving from the stretch up the back of your neck. And then we're going to just slowly put our chin over to the other side and just kind of feel that stretch in that side of the neck. Now you would think that we're finished there, but actually to really take care of our neck and muscles all there, we're going to drop our chin back down onto our chest again. And then look up straight. So it's always helpful to do that. Then there'll be no straining of necks and things like that. So hopefully you're feeling good and relaxed and you've taken a little moment out of your day to, <laughs> to get ready. So. The next thing about our actual voice is um, humming. So when you think about your voice, it does come from your throat and it will come out your mouth. But if we hum, you get that true sense that it can fill the space. And when it fills the space and then goes out into the microphone, it's a much fuller sound. So it's very helpful. So let's just try that for a minute now. So breathing in. And humming. Hmm. Now imagine if we had done that at the start, we would not have been able to hum for as long as we did before the breathing. So it is that so I'm hoping to be able to demonstrate how it is effective. And so hopefully when you did that humming, you could feel the vibration in your lips and in your mouth, but also kind of it goes up into your head. So now thinking about that the voice is coming from all of that space into the microphone will be a much better quality session of recording. Okay, so the next thing is a very practical uh, getting your brain in tune with your lips. So uh, it's an oldie but a goodie process which is 
tongue twisters. So we have a whole bunch and on the website along with this recording, which is going to be available into the future, I will give you a list of different tongue twisters that you could just try before you start recording. The Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers is very popular um, and helpful because it helps without puts and bursts. And so if you get that happening, it's really, really helpful. The uh, sea, she sells, she, sea, she sells seashells by the seashore. Helpful to start off slow and then get quicker. So she sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. That helps with the sibilance, the sounds. And so when you concentrate on uh, speaking with that, it will help transfer into the microphone well because uh, it, anything we can do beforehand actually reduces that post editing that is needed so it, it does it is helpful not that if you were going to record an interview with someone I, I wouldn't suggest <laughs> they'll think you're crazy <laughs> if you ask them to do all these practice things but it can be helpful for your own purposes to be able to know these are the things that can be helpful to get the best out of your recording. So the other very popular radio uh, ex exercise is uh, was new to me and before, I mean, the tongue twisters I, we all grew up with in, in school, I guess, but there's a red leather, yellow leather. And if you say that five times, sometimes I say 10 times to someone, but five times it really does help get your tongue kind of and lips into your brain in, a, in alignment and it's much easier to speak more fluidly and then so that transfers into a much better recording so we can try together red leather yellow leather 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 beautiful so are we feeling more connected so <laughs> i don't know I, it, it does work. I've used it in different different spaces and it's easy. So that's the other thing. So sometimes it's easy to dismiss it because oh, it's a bit too simple, but you know, it really does work. So the next little bit is to the equipment, the microphone. So it's helpful to know what microphone you have to use or when you come into, you're very always welcome to come to Hope FM, but we have a couple of different types of microphones here. So here in the studio, we have a condenser mic that is unidirectional. Now unidirectional means that the sound is only coming really from this end. So what happens is when you're trying to have two people coming in talking this way, it will not work. So it's helpful to know what kind of microphone you're going to be recording with. The other kind of microphones that you can have is an omnidirectional, so it captures sound from all around. And the third type of microphone is a cartoid or cartioid microphone. And when you think of that, think of heart, heart shaped, there's the clue. It's actually in a heart shape around the microphone. So if this was a cartioid one, you would have it upright. I can't, let me, I'm just gonna leave that there. <laughs> um, it would upright and it would be a, sh a shape from the side of the microphone. So usually when, you, when you're looking at people doing recording and the microphone's upright, it will be an omnidirectional or a cartoid microphone. So that again is helpful to note. You still want to be without a, about a fist stiff distance apart. That's its kind of sweet spot for recording. And when you're adjusting, if there is adjustment available for your microphones, it's not volume, it's actually called gain. And when you think of not loudness, but think in terms of sensitivity. So when you're recording and you'll see sound waves spiking, it's because the sensitivity has been turned up, not because it's louder. So helpful to think about that when you're thinking about your setting. So we've done our voice, we've talked about the microphone equipment. The third thing is your actual environment. And so we often, when we just go about our daily lives, we don't think about all the things we can hear or we actually just filter them out. Um, in here is pretty good for recording. So there's got sound treated walls and you can see Maybe you can see some of the sound treated foam, but not everyone usually has that. So if we were to record in homes, you want to find as much soft furnishing or soft material like blankets, curtains, those kind of things, 
because anything where the sound is not going to bounce directly back into the microphone is helpful, otherwise it sounds very echoey and terrible. There are a few things you can do on Audacity to fix that, but it's, if you can work on preparing your environment as best as possible, then you're going to end up with a better recording in the first place and less than you need to edit. So outside is good, save for the traffic noise or even a friendly bird, <laughs> maybe is too friendly sometimes. Um, ticking clock, so sometimes it can be small noises um, that you generally filter out in life, but when, when it comes to actually recording, the microphone doesn't have a filter on, we don't want to hear that right now, it will pick everything up. So it's really important to just take again a moment to stop and listen and hear what are the other noises and what could you do to mitigate them before you start recording. So I, that, that's the best, without knowing your own individual environments, that's the best I can do. But you can find, do some quirky different things like uh, sit in your cupboard or the old blanket fort when you were, when you were kids with, with cubbies. That can be a really helpful and great space to start recording in. Um, even hanging a blanket or a towel on the back of a door in a room, will all of it will help to add, the, to reduce the, uh, the sound of the reverb happening on hard floors, if you can find somewhere with carpet or a rug, things like that. So we've, today we've covered, so far, caring for your voice, using a microphone, looking at the environment. Um, the next stage of this session would be actually getting to the computer and looking, getting Audacity onto your computer. There'll be links also attached in the documentation attached to this module. So it'll show you how to get Audacity onto your computer if you don't already have it. Uh, and then start to think about microphones. If you don't have one, ECA or Esperance Community Arts has equipment that can be borrowed so that you can use that to record. And all of these things will help get a better quality recording. Also in the documentation attached to this session is some clips that I've found really helpful in quickly being able to upskill you in how to use Audacity. It is a very simple program. It pretty much undoes one thing at a time. You can play or record or edit. You can't do all of the things at the same time. Uh, but, it, but I would recommend it to get in and play. It feels like a, it could be a whole new sandpit to play in um, with, with, with audio recording. So that's pretty much it for module one. <laughs> Thanks for your company. And I look forward, hopefully, to seeing you in another module. And I also want to take just at this end part to recommend catching catching with, catching up with, oh, this is going to be edited. I Start really... Again. <laughs> Start again. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to recommend the other sessions that are part of the Digital Creative Hub because they are amazing and put together they will really round out your skills and the sky will absolutely be the limit in what you can create um, digitally for your, your art practice. So thanks for your time. <laughs>